welcome to Wrong Way, and this is the E12 GT. Let me tell you more about it. First of all, also huge thanks to Zvinne Miasto for loaning me this scooter for testing purposes. This is not a sponsored review and I don't receive any kickbacks from any sold scooter. Anyways, all the info is below and let's get on with the review. First, I'm going to compare this scooter against the e Booster S2 with the 10.5 mR battery, which was already reviewed earlier. The link to this video is also here in the top corner. Then we're going to talk about the performance, the ergonomics, all the features, and finally I'll conclude this review. Let's start with the comparison. So the e GT, and I believe it's the 2020 uh, version I have here, is a 48 volt scooter, which is a lot of volts for such a small scooter. Uh, the battery is a 10.5 amp hour unit with Samsung 35E cells, which gives you a total of 500 watt hours, around the same capacity as a Xiaomi M365 Pro. Uh, the Booster 5, on the other hand, has 120 watt hours less at 36 volts, 10.5 amp hours. That's also why the e GT has a longer deck than the Booster 5. You'll just notice it when these scooters are side by side. It's just like a five or 10 centimeters. It's not really a noticeable difference, but still you have more space for your legs on this scooter. The next big thing is the performance bumps. So on the e Booster 5, you have 500 watts and on the GT, you have 700 watts. So I believe this is the peak performance of these scooters, but also might be something different. I don't really know. Anyhow, this is what is stated on the e side. The GT is also heavier at 13 kilograms, the 2020 versions, versus the 11 kilograms of and the Booster 5. Still a lot lighter than a 14 point something Xiaomi M365 Pro. The charging is actually quite similar in both of these scooters because they feature a 3 amp charger but because the battery is bigger in the GT it actually charges faster uh, when it comes to just just the charging rate uh, so now in the GT there is a fan charger so a charger with a fan which charges the scooter up in around three and a half hours and it's around the same time in the regular booster 5 but it has a smaller battery and therefore the charging rate is also slower. The booster 5 also has a fanless charger so this is also a good thing and the charging brick is also a bit smaller. So the e GT is not only an upgrade in performance or battery capacity but they also refined quite a lot of features and like details on the scooter. Things you can notice right away when you put both of these scooters side by side is the smaller amount of visible screws which make the design of the exterior look just a lot better they have a new charge port cover which doesn't fall away after one week of use it's really cool there's also like a 48 volt emblem on the charge board in this area the design is also a bit more interesting and another interesting thing is that the driving column is a bit higher up than the uh, e-trail booster 5 giving the scooter a bit more rigidity because the scooter again has more power and it definitely needs that rigidity right in this area of the scooter you can also notice the new folding mechanism which feels a lot more stable a lot more rigid and I'm not so afraid to, that it might just fold when I'm driving on the scooter which uh, is actually quite terrifying if <laughs> if this happens because the scooter folds with uh, the front wheel.
So the folding mechanism is also better on the e 12 GT. The next big difference is uh, the addition of a drum brake in the rear wheel. We'll talk about the functionality of this brake later on uh, when we talk about the performance, but it is here. It's also branded with the Tektro uh, name, which is okay, quite good, whatever. Um, it has a rubber deck. It has finally a kickstand, so you can just, you know, leave the scooter uh, without folding it. And what stayed the same is the overall design of the scooter and for some reason the e GT does not feature a cruise control anymore. I was checking all the P settings in the scooter and you can see that in the booster uh, 5 you can set the kickstart, you can set the cruise control and and take off the speed limit on the scooter. On the GT, you can just select uh, the kick start or motor start. So the scooter starts right away without needing to push it. Uh, it also has five modes as the Booster 5. So this is also quite similar. The speeds are, I actually don't know because I always ride in the fastest setting. There's also the speedo, the handlebars are still super narrow. The narrowest probably on the market. It still has a kick brake for some reason. I don't know why, because it has a drum brake. They could have removed it, but maybe this is just for the sake of cost of manufacturing. The lights stayed the same, the accelerator, the thumb accelerator and thumb electronic brake. So this is how the GT stacks up. When it comes to performance, you can see the acceleration test right here. Yeah, the, the Booster GT feels noticeably faster, but it's not, in my opinion, a 40 km an hour scooter. Uh, the thing is that the Booster 5 is not a 36 km an hour scooter. The top speed that you can have on the GT that you can also hold over an extended period of time is maybe 35 to maximum, like maximum 37 km uh, an hour via GPS. Uh, the speedo on this scooter does show you a faster speed most of the time like five or seven even kilometers faster than real life especially in the higher speeds the booster 5's top speed is around 30 kilometers an hour in my testing so yeah still the gt is noticeably faster uh, than the uh, booster 5 but but then again it's not a 40 kilometer an hour scooter when it comes to the speed that you could drive on for an extended period of time these tests were also performed with 100 percent uh, battery level and and there was also basically no wind when i was testing it now now the braking is a very interesting part and I need to elaborate on that because I did three brake tests on the scooter and you can see them right here. So, so here you can see where I started braking. So this is the brake on the right side with the electronic brake. And this on the left side is just <laughs> uh, the rear drum brake. And I gotta tell you, this is pretty noticeable. These solid tires are really sort of soft. And the problem is right away after such a intense braking maneuver from 35 kilometers an hour on the speedo, which is not the top speed of the scooter I could feel right away that uh, the tire uh, got you know isn't doesn't ride so perfect anymore yeah they should definitely definitely finally put um, tube tires on these scooters or at least air tires please it's very noticeable where it skips over Doop. Doop. Where is it? Yeah, here. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is like one part of the tire is like flat. So I just watched back the entire clip and sadly the camera 
did cut off uh, both of the longer braking distances um, but I can assure you that the braking distance with just the mechanical brake and just the electronic brake in the front is totally the same so when you want to brake in an emergency use two at the same time if you don't do that I brake around here with both the scooters there's like one meter difference this could be also the difference of the speed so yeah the braking distance with uh, just the brake or just the electronic brake is 17 meters and and with the two at the same time it's half of that I think that uh, e-trow should definitely when braking hard with the drum brake activate the electronic brake to the max Anyhow, in day-to-day -day use, I think that the electronic brake is totally more than enough. The thing you need to note about braking on this scooter is that it has solid tires and they are way less grippy than tube tires or tubeless uh, tires with air. And especially when you're in the rain, you have to really watch out on turns and know that your braking distance is huge. Um, this scooter is actually quite scary to me and I don't say that very very often because the speeds you reach here above 30 kilometers an hour um, with these tires are I think pretty dangerous so uh, if you get this scooter don't match it right away to the top speed just ease into it a bit get it to move three and four and when you notice how these solid tires really work then you can move up the speed but still I consider this thing to be a lot more dangerous than a modded Xiaomi N365 Pro Okay, so then we move on the hill climb test and it performed better than the Booster 5, which is of course um, to be expected. It climbs a 7 to 10 degree hill much better, but a 13 degree hill is really hard to conquer with the scooter. Maybe with 100% battery, I had a bit less than 100% uh, on, this, on this recording that you see right now. Um, so 12 degrees is maybe tops on the scooter, definitely not 25 like on the e-trial side. When it comes to range, I did a single range test. I did not drive it all the time flat out, but I did drive a bit faster than on the E12 Booster 5. The range I got is around 25 kilometers. You can see uh, the speeds here on the chart. It was a really windy day and I also did some hill climbs in the, uh, this test. So it wasn't a easy test for the scooter, but it also wasn't exceptionally hard. Uh, what you will notice is that the range is bigger on the E12 G but because you also ride faster on the scooter the range will go away uh, quicker so in the same speeds of uh, the booster 5 you will get probably maybe 20 percent maybe 15 percent more range basically the battery difference between the Booster 5 and the GT. When it comes to just the suspension, it's really good. It's actually exceptionally good for a scooter uh, that has just solid tires, but still you will get a lot of rattling, especially on pavement. But the, but the suspension will help you out with the bigger bumps and make them noticeably more comfortable uh, than if you would handle them on a Xiaomi M365 Pro or M365. The scooter also feels pretty solid. I like the new folding mechanism. There is nothing pretty much loose on the scooter. If you count in the portability factor of the scooter, it's actually pretty good, but I wish it had tubeless tires or tube tires so much. This would make the scooter so, so, so much better. I think it's a necessary upgrade. And I think that finally e has to acknowledge 
tube tires um, because they're just so much better in comfort and security, stability, all those things. I know that a solid tire is puncture resistant, but I think it's a trade-off I'd be willing to take. So please, e -trial, one day show me a scooter with tube tires. Anyhow, let's move on to ergonomics. And here it's basically the same thing, the same story as on the e Booster 5. Very narrow handlebars, so the, it's good to maneuver in the city. It's really comfortable to drive with just one hand. That's pretty cool. These handlebars also fold and the scooter folds naturally. The height of the handlebars also fold, make, making the scooter really, really, really portable. Way more portable than a M365 or a 9-bot ES2, ES4. The deck is also reasonably big. Let's move on to feet. Uh, it has running lights like the Booster 5, it also has a sensor, brake lights, it has a horn which is pretty pretty good to hear. You can only select uh, the modes 1 through 5 and the kickstart. There's also a temperature meter, I don't know with which temperature it is, a speedo, the trip, it falls and blah blah blah. Okay so now I want to conclude this scooter and <laughs> I gotta say to you guys I'm not oftentimes scared of riding a scooter. Uh, probably you saw a lot of videos on the channel when I'm riding fast on a scooter, on a wolf, on a thunder, but I am scared of riding uh, this uh, thing fast because uh, it is just so light and it has these solid tires. The, the accelerator is sort of sticky. Um, let me explain. So when you accelerate and then you move the throttle and then you push the, the throttle a bit less, so you want to accelerate less, it actually still keeps accelerating very fast unless you go to a point when it totally shuts off uh, the acceleration. So um, I found this to be a bit tricky, a bit um, like hard to get used to. This may make the scooter feel faster, but it's also quite uh, uncomfortable. So I don't really like the throttle in this thing. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a fan of fast riding on uh, two solid tires. And for the price of around 1,000 to 1,100 euro, I think that a Speedway Mini 4 Pro or a Speedway uh, Legere would be a much, much, much better choice. Unless you really need a super light scooter with a bit more range than the e Booster 5 and a bit more speed than that. Basically, there are not many options around except for the magnificent light unicycles like the Galway M103. So, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. And once again, thanks to my Patreons, you are great. Thank you for the support. See you in the next episode.